I'm Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and in this special edition of Earth from Space, I'm joined by Pascal Ehrenfreund, who is the chair of the DLR Executive Board, and she's with us at Ezrin, ESA's Earth Observation Center in Frascati, Italy, to discuss exchanging ideas in Earth observation activities. I'm also joined by Josef Ashbacher, who is the director of ESA's Earth Observation Programs. Now, Pascal, one of the main points of DLR's space research is Earth observation, of course. Where do you see common Earth observation topics between DLR and ESA, and the biggest potential for increased cooperation? Well, um, Germany is the largest uh, contributor to the Earth Observation Envelope program, to Copernicus, to UMATSAT, uh, and I think that's why we are also the most important uh, partner to ESA in the Earth Observation program. Uh, we have in Germany a very reliable industry uh, which is uh, developing satellites and um, I think we have also a lot of uh, technology development which is funded by DLR uh, which is trying uh, uh, you know to uh, boost new methods services um, we have a very um, I think involved strongly involved uh, research landscape uh, which is involved in the scientific uh, missions of Earth observations, and they uh, really gain new results uh, about the system Earth. And that again helps our uh, value-added industry uh, in order to provide with this knowledge um, new services. So I think there is uh, really a lot of common interests. And uh, when we look in the future, of course, for Copernicus, uh, evolution, we have the same interests in uh, monitoring of greenhouse gases, we have uh, certainly um, interests in um, uh, data, uh, access to data and also um, uh, processing them. Uh, and I think this is where we are, have already a lot of uh, joint efforts also in the preservation, long-term preservation of data and obviously also uh, in the successful operation of a, a ground segment, you know, infrastructure for the Sentinel satellites. Now, Josef, from the ESA side, what are the benefits of this close partnership? The benefits are enormous. I mean, as uh, Pascal was saying, we are working together on, on many domains. Uh, just a few examples um, on the Sentinels, on Sentinel-2, Sentinel-4, Sentinel-5 and Sentinel-6. German industry is the prime contractor. Uh, but also on Cryosat, uh, also on the swarm missions. So German industry is basically everywhere and Germany really is the biggest partner in the Earth Observation Program. And I'm very happy about this because this gives stability and really allows to have the expertise and the excellence in, in ESA in the Earth Observation Directorate. But also, and I think this is very important, we discussed it uh, before, uh, is that uh, we both have, have a very similar vision of where we have to go in the future. Uh, Germany is uh, reorienting uh, its DLR uh, according to new challenges uh, which are happen outside. Uh, ESA Earth Observation is doing exactly the same. We are looking where are the challenges, what do we have to do in order to meet these challenges and be competitive uh, in the future and be able to help uh, industry and our partners uh, in Germany but also in other countries in, in, in Europe in order to really build up its capacity and be even more and even better in the future. And there I, I see a lot of uh, parallels and a lot of cooperation possibilities. Our uh, Fee Lab, uh, for example, could work extremely well with the think tank and many of the uh, new institutes that are being built up in, in Germany. And uh, simply put, I think there's a lot we can do together in a very good way. Now, of course, looking ahead to the future, Germany is planning to launch multiple satellites in the coming years. Where do you see synergies with ESA or with the Copernicus missions? Yeah, well, we are uh, on the, we are working on the mission NMAP, which is a, a hyperspectral um, a remote sensing mission. And uh, there are, of course, a lot of synergies with uh, Sentinel-2, so complementary data set. Uh, we also will launch in 2021, uh, in cooperation with France, uh, the mission Merlin, which uh, will uh, define, uh, you know, column densities and concentrations of atmospheric methane, sinks and sources. And um, I think that uh, is going in parallel with uh, Sentinel-5. And uh, so I think there are a lot of synergies and um, I think also concerning our Earth observation programs, we um, 
uh, we invest a lot, you know, in having uh, new methods, products, services for national and sentinel missions in in through our national program in in in, in Germany. And also, I think uh, both of us, uh, ESA and and DLR Germany, we would like to. Uh, uh, you know, support uh, the space companies uh, in, of course, Germany, but in whole Europe, in order uh, really uh, to be uh, uh, good on the global market and uh, develop well. Now, of course, Joseph, what are the benefits of having national missions like some of the ones that Pascal mentioned or other European satellites for ESA's Earth observation programs? Um, for ESA's Earth observation programs, first of all, um, uh, the satellites uh, which we are developing in ESA. Um, are, uh, are complementary to the national missions. Uh, let me take one example. Uh, TerraSAR was mentioned as a fantastic mission of Germany, but it works in X-band uh, and at a very high resolution, uh, one meter and, and better, uh, which is uh, uh, different to Sentinel-1, for example, uh, which uh, has a 10 meter resolution and has a C-band uh, radar on board. So these different sensors are very complementary and they can work extremely well together. And if, we, uh, if I have one wish where we should really intensify our cooperation is, uh, is to combine uh, these data sets and really uh, show better the synergy or the complementarity of these data for various applications, agriculture, forestry, disaster management, uh, oceanography and so on. And there's so much to do and I really would like to see a stronger co cooperation and coordination of uh, national missions like the ones of DLR or in Germany and uh, ESA missions uh, like the Sentinels or Earth Explorers in many disciplines. Now, Pascal, after your meetings with representatives here at ESA's Earth Observation Center, what are your views of ESA's Earth Observation Program? Well, of course, it is very impressive, and we also invest a lot <laughs> into it. Uh, and I, I think it, it just responds to uh, requirements of uh, uh, many different users of many different countries and uh, just many different stakeholders and be it science, be it industry, be it international organization, NGOs, banks, uh, name it what. And I think uh, this is really impressive. And I think uh, we are really looking forward, you know, to uh, join efforts uh, and, and increase our cooperations on, on many topics which uh, will be uh, really important in the future in Earth observations. And Yosef, what are you taking back from this encounter? I'm taking back, uh, first of all, I was really inspired what I heard about DLR overall, not only the space part, but the aerospace part. I have to say it's very impressive what DLR is doing. And DLR is undergoing a, a huge change at the moment. And I think I'm really taking inspiration also from DLR, what we can do in ESA. But of course, having said that, uh, Germany is our biggest stakeholder. Um, we have three main sources of income, uh, Copernicus, Member States and Umitsat. And in all three of them, Germany is the biggest uh, uh, contributor to our programs. So therefore, I'm very happy and very glad to have the representative of uh, the biggest stakeholder here uh, today. And uh, of course, we will work uh, extremely close to define uh, the programs and the activities together with Germany, but also, also of course, with all the other partners. Well, of course, we look forward to seeing how the two agencies continue to complement each other. Thank you both so much for joining us today. And to our viewers, remember that to learn more about space or about our planet, you can visit our website at www.esa.int.